video is about the pruning of the tomatoes in the caterpillar tunnel. And Tori's pruning right now, so I'm gonna let her explain how we do it. Other people may do it a different way, that's fine. But this is what we do. Hey guys, so I'm pruning tomatoes in the greenhouse. So I'm just gonna show you guys kind of what I'm doing here. Um, so I'm first just starting at the bottom of the plant and I'm just looking at the bottom here and I find where the first fruit is starting. So the flowers and fruits are starting here and I'm just gonna prune off the lower branches of the leaves. So I'll prune off like two or three. Leave the one below it. This one? Yeah, this one. That one. So I'll leave one below it and just prune off all the other ones. And then as I work my way up the plant, I'm gonna prune off any suckers that are coming off the branches. So this is a sucker here. So you have the main stem coming up here, a branch coming off here. This is the sucker. Just pull that off. As I come up the plant, there's more suckers. If they're big ones, I'll cut them off. If they're small ones, I'll just kind of pinch them off. And then finally, I'm at the top. There's no suckers left. I'm gonna go ahead and trellis this by just spinning it around the piece of trellis there. Then I move on to the next. That's pretty much it for pruning. Now these are indeterminate plants, so they'll grow indeterminately. So like your bush tomatoes that you always see with cages around them are generally determinates. They grow to a determined height. But these ones, in this situation, you can keep pruning them as they grow up this trellis here and keep having them produce. The, there's a flower structure that's starting to get fruit on it. Here's another one. You get, last year we got about, was it like 10 pounds per plant? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, 10 pounds per plant. So in this tunnel here, there's about 100 plants per bed, 10 pounds per plant. So that's like 1,000 pounds per bed. That means 2,000 pounds per tunnel. Sold at three to four dollars a pound if we can get it or however we sell it. That's the other trick to all this. That's pretty good return on this one tunnel that already grew do a lot of arugula, lettuce mix, uh, scarlet turnips, spinach all winter. And then we switched it over to the tomatoes. And this thing is, this tunnel is eight months old. So it's pretty, these are pretty productive and worth it in my opinion. There's some other things with pruning these, like if you get diseased leaves, take those off. Um, you can get really into the tomato production with like numbers of leaves in between your fruit structures and I haven't gotten into that yet. This is our first season on our own and I would rather grow them, sell them, and then get fancy about the growing. I think that the growing and selling is more important than getting fancy about it. So that's how we go about it. So we're probably going to sell these at the market, to chefs and restaurants. Definitely to the honey hog, doing a cucumber and tomato salad. Uh, hopefully gonna be selling them right off the road. Take advantage of the busy road if we can. And where else are you selling them? Maybe to Fresh List. Yeah, farmer's Where, market. Yeah, wherever we can. Uh, smell this smelly smell, it smells. Smelly! <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we had a bed of lettuce over here that got aphids and whitefly during the winter months and then we tarped it. The insects that could get out ended up getting onto these tomatoes. But their population hasn't really grown, but I'll show you what they look like. Oh my god, they're showing the bad stuff on YouTube. So this little guy on the end here above my finger is an aphid and then all the white things here he's you know, the green on my finger here we go 
the green on my finger is the aphids and the white is the white fly. It hasn't caused much of an issue yet for production, but since it's starting to fruit, I don't really want them on the fruit. Um, what we can do is come in here with uh, neem oil or insecticidal soap, probably roll with the soap first. And you just come in here and spray them and the soap suffocates them. So that's all considered organic or whatever, but yeah. Oh, you missed a sucker. Oh no. So if, if you're pruning these a lot, you get tomato hands. You got tomato hands? Yeah. Check these out. It's like a green, blackish slime. Green goblin. Yeah, smells really good. So we do this about once a week. This time of year, probably twice a week, just to stay ahead of it. And it slows down a little bit in the heat of summer, but we have no signs of tomato hornworm, hornworm yet. And when did that show up last year? Around this time. In June, I thought. Yeah. Well, we were in South Carolina too. Yeah. So it'd be a little earlier. Yeah, the hornworm it can be can do some serious damage. And then your time pruning becomes pruning and looking for hornworm or army worm. But we'll see. One of the benefits of this uh, weed mat down here and the same with the silage tarp in the other tunnel is all of the prune foliage, you can just rake it up super easy. You want to rake it up because you don't want bugs getting in here fungus is forming, it's just better to stay clean. That's the pruning from about 200 plants per week. It gets, this is probably the heaviest time of year, but it's a lot of foliage, you guys think. If you're doing uh, dirt in the ad. You're trying to stay productive and um, efficient. Like, my mind immediately goes to how much, you know, soil amendment time was potentially wasted there, but it all comes out in the end. Here's the clip at the bottom from the other video, wrapped around the stem, and then up to the top. Now later in the season, we'll take these here and you unwind some twine and you give the plant extra twine to grow up but you also move this over so then the plant lays kind of horizontal, goes over a foot or two or whatever it ends up being and then goes up. So you can take a plant that's this tall and shrink it to this height and move it over here and have it grow up another two or three feet and then do the same thing to indeterminate varieties like that just keep getting production from them i'll make some uh videos about this as we keep going but for the basics of getting the tomatoes going in the tunnel it's pretty much it i think uh you know in maybe three weeks or so or four weeks when, we, when these reach the top and we lower them i'll show that too but if anybody's been doing this as I've been putting them on YouTube, this should help them keep going. And like I said, this is probably not the most perfect way. This is what we do now. Probably research it, study it more this winter, and then change it. See if we can get more production or try something different. And, well, this works though. And it worked last year. And that's what's important for us to get this stuff growing have it be quality nice and then find our markets and sales outlets and then we'll get with the you know under the fancy stuff one last thing it's going to be in the 40s tonight we're going to close this tunnel now with the sun still on it as well as the cu the other cucumber and tomato tunnel that way they can keep this day warmth in there overnight and the plants will be pretty unaffected by it thanks for watching Hope this helped you guys, and I uh, hope your spring is going pretty good.